What's up gamers? I'm making this video today for anyone looking to improve their movement in Apex Legends on controller. Like the title suggests, I'll be covering more advanced techniques. If you're still getting a grasp of the movement in Apex, check out my more beginner focused video below. As always, there will be timestamps in the description so you can skip around to whatever it is you're looking for. I'm going to be going over some really practical techniques as well as some more niche ones. Really, I'm just trying to share some of the stuff I've learned that some people may not have discovered yet. But like I said, this video will be specifically covering movement techniques, not necessarily game sense, positioning, or anything like that. Listen up, gamers. It's part one. How to move while you're looting. As far as I know, we know of three ways to move while looting on controller, excluding any external software or controls. The first way is simply by crouching while you loot. This requires you to bind crouch to something other than the B or circle button. For example, I know a lot of players have crouch mapped to the right stick, so while you're looting, you could tap the stick down to crouch and uncrouch while you loot. Obviously, you're still an open target, but this can, at the very least, make it harder to get a cheap headshot off on you. The second and third ways are by either jumping while opening the loot menu or running while opening the loot menu, or both. These methods are obviously extremely useful for shield swapping in tight situations. They will be a lot easier for you to achieve if you have a paddle mapped to the interact button or play with a claw grip. Accomplishing these methods is actually pretty straightforward. It can just be a little challenging to nail consistently. All you have to do while jumping or running is look at the death box and hold the interact button down long enough that it opens the loot menu. If you're trying to practice this, I would suggest using a death box after a fight if you know you're safe. I haven't really seen or come up with any other ways to practice this. Something else to note, in order to have enough time to interact, I would suggest stopping or stepping backwards for a moment, then continuing to move forward while holding the interact button. I've noticed just running past it sometimes doesn't give me enough time to get the shield swap off, or simply won't open the loot menu. Like I said, from what I know, these are all the possible methods for moving while looting a controller right now, unless you bring external software controls into the picture. If you know of any other ways to move while looting a controller, please feel free to leave a comment. It's part two. How to zipline super mode on. Zipline super jumping is when you grab onto and immediately jump off of any zipline, but with more momentum and height than a normal zipline jump. This movement technique is definitely one of the more difficult ones to learn, but it's super fun. And with King's Canyon back in Season 8, there are a lot of practical uses for it. In the firing range, you can use the zipline over here, or you can set up a Pathfinder zipline. Really, you can just use any zipline you want. To get a super jump, you need to press the interact button to latch onto the zipline, then immediately spam the jump button. From what I've been able to tell, you can do this on any zipline from any angle. You just have to be grounded. This won't work mid-air, at least in my experience. Like I said, this technique is one of the more tricky ones. It may take some time to nail the timing of this as it's pretty precise. But once you nail it, it's so satisfying. There's not much you can do to learn this other than sit in the firing range and go at it. But one tip I can give is to make sure you're not holding the interact button down for too long. I found that pressing it as briefly as possible, then immediately spamming the jump button has helped me perform this more consistently. Come for part three, redirecting on Octane's jump pad. With the recent Octane changes in season eight, he's stronger and funner than ever. This next piece of movement tech involves a few unique ways you can utilize his jump pad. If you didn't already know, you can jump straight up and down on the jump pad by simply standing still in front of it and meleeing. When the melee pushes you forward and you make contact with the jump pad, you'll shoot straight up into the air. You can keep going up and down as long as you don't press anywhere on the left stick. But, you can actually use this technique to perform something pretty special. If you melee onto the jump pad, then quickly push your left stick down, left, or right, you will launch in that direction. The only real challenge is making sure you release the left stick before you make contact with the jump pad. If you're still pressing the left stick in any direction when you hit the jump pad, you can still get it in the right direction, but in general, it won't work as consistently. I know what you're thinking. Gage, when the hell would I ever use this? Well, let me tell you. I don't know. Alright, it's time for part 4. How to avoid ledge grabbing on shorter walls. If you're like me, you probably hit a couple wall jumps on every rotation or during fights. 
particularly when you're in front of your teammates so they see how massive your member is. Well, something you've probably noticed is, if a wall is too short, instead of entering the climbing animation, you grab the ledge, and it really just blue balls your wall jump. However, thanks to Iron Adam's amazing comment, and some input by my Twitch mod and RBW video editor Skeven Spielberg, I'm glad to share a solution for this. I like to use this platform in the firing range to practice this. So basically, if you pull back on the left stick right before making contact with the wall, you won't leg grab. On top of that, I found that looking further down definitely helps me get this more consistently. Like with most of these more advanced techniques, there isn't much else I can say to help you start performing this. It really is just a matter of timing, practice, and muscle memory. Here's some footage with my webcam to hopefully help convey the timing of this technique a little better. And finally, gamers, it's time for part 5. How to bunny hop like Ace, even though you can't hit your shots. I say bunny hopping for later in the video since it's something that is well covered in a lot of other tutorials, and also pretty widely understood at this point. However, I figured I'd give some of my input and take a jab at explaining it myself. Bunny hopping is a great way to stay unpredictable, maintain momentum, and approach certain angles while being able to ADS quickly. How you perform this technique depends heavily on your button layout. If you have paddles, it's best to have a paddle map to crouch. If you don't, however, I would suggest mapping crouch to your right stick and using toggle crouch. But whatever button layout you choose, it should still be possible. You just may be more restricted. To put it simply, all you need to do is slide jump, then as soon as you hit the ground, jump again, and repeat. Every time you touch the ground, jump as soon as possible. In the ideal scenario, you'll have crouch mapped to a paddle and hold the crouch enabled. In this case, all you have to do is hold the crouch paddle and press jump every time you hit the ground. However, how I used to bunny hop without paddles is by using toggle crouch, pressing the crouch button, then pressing the jump button, and alternating. This can be a little more difficult and it definitely restricts your movement, but it still gets the job done. If your layout allows it, you can toss in some turning to help turn corners and move around more efficiently. These are just two examples of how I've bunny hopped, but I know there's a couple of other button layouts primed for performing this. If you have any input on this, please feel free to leave a comment. That's all the techniques I have for this video, I hope it was helpful and easy to understand. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this was specifically covering actual techniques, not necessarily when or where to use them best. I'm hoping to make a video covering things more of that nature soon. Thanks for all the support I've been getting on my videos. Since my last upload, we've broken 200 subscribers, and I've received a lot of requests for different tutorials. If you have any, please feel free to leave a comment, DM me, or let me know on stream. That's all for now. Aim Assist Gamer.